Thank you so much. Hello. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much for organizing this protest once again. My name is Janneke Prins and I will speak on behalf of the International Socialists. The Dutch government fell in January over a humongous scandal around taxes. Thousands of people had been falsely accused of fraud, their lives had been put into downright misery. Large contingents of these victims were people of color. This scandal was a perfect example of institutional racism and in the meantime, Rutte, our Prime Minister, said that he saw no problem in ethnic profiling. How is this? That the state apparatus, the tax authorities, can just continue business as usual and can get, get away with this. I think there is a correlation with the rise of the extreme right that functions as a battering ram. And in my speech, I want to get deeper into the functioning of the extreme right. Next month, we will have general elections. Geert Wilders' election program calls for the deportation of Muslims from this country. Specifically, his party, PVV, is targeting Syrian refugees. He wants to deport them all and have the Syrian dictator Assad decide what to do with them. Wilders wants a ministry of de-Islamification. And he comes in second in the polls uh, these weeks. And this is scary shit. And worst of all, there's basically no political party that calls out and says, hey, we've seen this type of politics before and we never ever want to see this again. We see a lot of smaller extreme right groups joining the elections and we can laugh about the fragmentation, but there is a huge danger here. Because together, these parties will dominate the general narrative. Racism and fascism will normalize ever more. The main issues will not be how to fight the climate crisis, how to lower the rents and the cost of living, to spend more money on proper health care. Hello? Oh, health care. The main issue will be the further criminalization of black and brown people and to have more police, racist police, on the streets. In the meanwhile, over the past years, we already saw worldwide how the confidence of the extreme right has grown massively. Key factor here was the presidency of Donald Trump. Time and again, he, framed, he, he fanned the confidence of the Proud Boys and followers of QAnon conspiracy nonsense. Also in the Netherlands, extreme right groups have gained confidence. Back in 2017, Blokkeer Friesen occupied a national highway to prevent Kikart Zwarte Piet to demonstrate. Mosques have been set on fire or here, like in Gelene town nearby, they saw a pig head on their doorstep. And last year, in 2020, neo-Nazis have been tapping into the confusion around Corona and are spreading their conspiracy theories ever more. And we have seen an increase of harassment and doxing of trade unionists anti-racist and climate activists, some of them have spoken today. These political developments, <laughs> these, develop these political developments feed the hooligans that were here on the Freithof on November, 20, uh, November 15. I was there in that corner on the watch out for Kikach for the Piet to see if there were extreme right figures and hell, I saw a lot of them. And I saw the terrifying hatred in their eyes. Racism against black people has normalized, hatred against Muslims has become the standard. But today we are here to reclaim the streets. I think we are over a hundred people, and this is an, there's an important slogan in the social movements. Her streets, our streets. Her streets, our streets. Her streets, our streets. It's not theirs. It's not Wilders. It's not Baudet's. It's not them of the hooligans. And in this light, I want to round up with calling, recalling one of the best actions we had uh, organized in this town five years ago. Wilders came to the city to fly for a national referendum. And with 30 activists, we held up in several shops waiting for him to pass. Then we showed up in the streets and took our banners from our coats and we chased him out of town in 20 minutes. This really... 
This really broke the confidence for him for a good period of time. He did not show his face in public for the rest of the year. It took some tough discussions and decisions amongst the activists, and we also had some sheer luck, to be honest, in the streets. But we need to do this stuff again. What I mean by this is that the way we fight and organize is crucial. We need to learn from previous fights in history. Read about Cable Street, London, 1936. How thousands of working people defended a Jewish neighborhood when fascists wanted to march down their streets. It broke the extreme rise. We don't know, we don't know an English Hitler. Read about the anti-Nazi league in the 70s how they prevented the rise of the British National Party and had 60,000 miners uh, wearing this type of sticker. This is a, the, the one we made here in Maastricht, but there are several out there, of course, in history. 60,000 miners wore this on their helmets when going to work. One of the key demands was no more racism, racism on the shop floor. Let's remind that last summer we had 10,000s of people at the Black Lives Matter actions. We are way much more. We outnumber the hooligans by far if we take to the streets um, together. We need to join forces. If a Jewish man is attacked, we need to stand up. If Kikar Schwerte-Piet is being harassed, we need to stand up. If climate activists are being followed by the Dutch CIA, we need to stand up. An injury to, all, to one is an injury to all. And it's important, next, we, next month there will be a couple of demonstrations. There will be a women's march on the March 7. There will be a climate march on March 14. And possibly another anti-racist action on March 21. I hope you can join these as well. And let me end with one slogan. Black and white, yellow and brown, unite and fight, bring the fascists down. Thank you very much. Thank you, Janneke.